A recessive chin is such that the chin sits further back than is ideal. The ideal chin is really lined up uh, with the forehead. So on a profile view, we like to see that the chin is projecting as far forward as the uh, forehead. Now in this situation, this patient has a chin that, that is probably sitting back seven or eight millimeters from where it should be uh, ideally. With the ideal chin, the angle between the horizontal neck and vertical face is between 80 and 95 degrees. In a patient uh, who has a retrodisplaced or small chin, often that angle, again, is more uh, obtuse, or in this case, it might be as high as 120 to 130 degrees. So let's do an assessment of this patient. She does have a recessive chin, but otherwise, uh, she does not have extra skin or fat. Uh, the skin is not lax. She doesn't have any jowls and her skin is thick enough that uh, it's going to camouflage any of the surgical work that we do underneath. The recommendations for her would be to, to advance her chin. Now this can be done in several ways. The safest and most effective is to use uh, a chin implant. A chin implant is a solid material. It's made out of a solid silicone and it has enough density and strength to actually physically move the soft tissues of the neck forward. So this is an example of a chin implant. It's also very safe. This is something that it gets incorporated into the tissues and lasts permanently. And I think that's a very attractive uh, benefit to a traditional chin implant. So now I'll discuss the steps for chin augmentation. Of course, the patients are sedated for this procedure, but local anesthetic is used so that there's no discomfort. A small incision is placed in the submental crease, and that's an area right about here on me. That area is, is facing the floor, so it's not something that people can see. And it's very common for people to naturally have a crease in that area anyway, so it doesn't really look like a scar. Once the incision is made, a pocket is created in the midline of the chin, so just about this area here. And it's made big enough so that it can accept uh, the uh, anterior augmentation that we're going to get from the chin implant. Once that's performed, small incisions are placed into the periosteum, and that's the surface layer of the chin. A little pocket is created to accept the tail of the implant on each side, and the tails are inserted into those pockets. That allows the implant to sit in the midline, and then it's secured in place with stitches. Once that's all uh, set in place, then the skin is simply closed with dissolvable stitches. After the surgery, most people will have a little bit of discomfort, and we often will give patients uh, some pain medications for that. It's usually short-lived. There are some tapes and dressings that go onto the chin that stay for a week, but once those are off, people look quite normal. I think the augmentation that they see initially is probably uh, um, a little bit more than what they're going to see long term just because they have some tissue swelling as a result of the surgery. Usually at the three or four week mark, things have settled and the chin looks just the way it's going to look permanently. So what are the risks of chin implant surgery? Very similar to really any surgical procedure, it's always possible to get an infection or to have some bleeding from the incision line. Sometimes the wound will not heal as quickly as we'd like. All of our patients are placed on antibiotics uh, prior to the surgery, during the surgery, and afterwards. In terms of recovery, most patients go back to work after a week. There's always a little bit of swelling and some bruising at that time, so they may need to wear camouflage makeup uh, initially, but that resolves quite quickly. We don't generally use a compression garment, but often there are some tapes that are applied to the outside skin just to make sure that the implant stays where I've placed it for the first week. And those are removed at the one week post-operative visit. So again, when thinking about the risk-reward trade-off, with chin implant surgery, the surgery is, uh, is performed in a very small area. Um, very little skin is actually elevated in order to insert the implant. Uh, the procedure is fairly quick, and the risk of infection is very low. The reward is that there's a substantial augmentation that can be achieved with a chin implant. It feels extremely natural. It's sitting under many layers of skin and muscle, so it's not palpable. But because it's firm, it's able to, to substantially augment the chin in, in, in ways that wouldn't be possible with, uh, with injectable fillers or other alternatives. Again, on the spectrum of face and neck procedures, chin implant would be fairly low in terms of uh, the recovery period. So very short recovery, very low risk, um, and not a particularly invasive procedure with excellent long-term results and very substantial uh, changes to the, the shape and appearance of the chin. So here's an example of a patient who required a chin implant. She has a slightly recessive chin and you'll notice that it doesn't line up well with her forehead. It's sitting a little further back. So these are her results. We've advanced her chin with a, through a small submental incision. We've put in a medium-sized chin implant 
And that's bringing her chin forward nicely so that it's in, in line with her forehead. We always want to be very cautious in women not to advance the chin too much. It's always good to be conservative with the augmentation in women. You'll notice as well that we've uh, performed a rhinoplasty for her. It's a, quite a common combination.